economy of global business on the move. Millions of people across China rush home as holiday preparations ramp up a day before Chinese New Year's Eve. Holiday spending, China's January CPI rises by 0.3% month on month, driven by spending ahead of the Spring Festival. In positive signal, China's first tier cities relax housing purchase restrictions. Hello and welcome to this edition of Global Business on CGTN. I'm Guan Xing in Beijing. And first up in the program, President Xi Jinping extended his Spring Festival greetings on behalf of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and the State Council. At an address from the Great Hall of the People, President Xi sent his greetings to all of China's ethnic groups, as well as compatriots in Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and those living overseas. He stressed the importance of promoting national rejuvenation through China. Chinese modernization, not only for the Chinese people to pursue a better life, but also for global peace and development. He highlighted the country's economic recovery marked by a total economic output of 126 trillion yuan and celebrated China's successful hosting of major sports events like the Chengdu World University Games and Hangzhou Asian Games. He underscored China's support for the integration of Hong Kong and Macau into national development development cracking down on Taiwan independence activities while safeguarding sovereignty and security. Take a listen. Today we are here to bring in Today we've gathered here to ring in the Chinese New Year. First, on behalf of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council, I would like to extend my best festive wishes to all of you and pay New Year call to Chinese people of all ethnic groups, our compatriots in Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, Macau Special Administrative Region, Taiwan, and all overseas Chinese. Looking back on our hard work over the past year, we have come to realize more deeply that comprehensively advancing the course towards a strong nation and national rejuvenation in all respects through Chinese modernization is not only a bright path for the Chinese people to pursue a better and prosperous life, but also a just path to world peace and development. As long as we stay committed to the right path and our original aspirations and work jointly in a consistent way, we can surely overcome all kinds of difficulties and obstacles in the way forward and achieve success. Dragon is the totem of the Chinese nation. It is majestic and courageous with strong power and inclusive love. Dragon symbolizes the 5,000 years of the Chinese nation's untiring spirit to forge ahead. It also carries hundreds of millions of Chinese people's firm will and best wishes to promote the building of a strong country, the national rejuvenation in the new era. Today marks the 29th day of the 12th traditional Chinese calendar month, also the 14th day of the annual 40-day Spring Festival travel rush. And transport figures continue to peak. 12.5 million passenger trips by train are expected on Thursday. An additional 1,900 passenger trains have been deployed to cover the huge surge in passenger numbers. Starting from February the 1st, daily railway traffic has exceeded 12 million for eight consecutive days, culminating in Wednesday's peak of 12.965 million passenger trips. And official data shows over 2.64 billion passenger trips have been made during the first 13 days of the Spring Festival travel rush. Amid a group heading back home for the Chinese New Year, others have jumped at a chance to travel abroad. This has brought about inbound and outbound passenger flow at the ports nationwide. And China's National Immigration Administration says the daily average number of people passing through ports during the Spring Festival holiday is expected to reach 1.8 million, a 3.3 times increase compared to last year. In Beijing, the holiday travel rush continues to peak on the final day before the Spring Festival Eve. Our reporter Yang Chengxi brings us more updates from the Beijing South Railway Station. Now, just yesterday, some 750,000 people exited Beijing by train, and about a fifth of them traveled through here, the Beijing South Railway Station. Now, I've been observing here for the past few hours, and I feel a, a very orderly...
atmosphere. Now, uh, over the past few days, heavy snow have pummeled some of China's eastern and middle regions, and resulting in several delays in the station. But as the weather improved, the number of delays have gone down. Now, the railway station has also uh, also put on several measures to accommodate the high travel seasons. Now, for example, uh, this station used to close by 11.30 p.m. every day, but now it stays open all day to accommodate people who would have to wait here for their train transfers. Now, uh, the station has also set up emergency doorways for people who have to uh, rush to catch their trains. Now, uh, throughout the country, some 13 million people traveled by train today. Now, that is some 20 percent more than that of 2019. That was before the pandemic. Now, traveling throughout the Chinese New Year is also always a very stressful experience, uh, but many people would feel that it would be very much worth it because by this time tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night they will be joined with their family to prepare for the Chinese New Year, uh, New Year's Eve dinner, which is one of the most important rituals for many Chinese people. And after that, a lot of Chinese people would choose to travel around the country because according to data from one of China's ma uh, major mobile carriers, China Mobile, uh, internet traffic to tra uh, traveling apps have gone up 64 percent since the start of the travel season. And that points to the heightened enthusiasm for many uh, Chinese people uh, for fizzing around the country. With the Chinese New Year just around the corner, people across China are ushering the festival with various celebrations. In eastern China's Suzhou, people in Tongli Water Town celebrate the Chinese New Year with a yearly tradition shopping at a floating market. Vendor boats offer goods such as local wines, fish, and bouquets. On the frozen Songhua River in northeast China's Jilin, people also celebrate the New Year by visiting the market fair. Shopping aside, the snow scenery is also a highlight. And in North China's Shanxi, residents are sure in the year of the dragon with the culinary arts, baking steamed buns with decorative dragon designs. In southeastern China's Fujian, residents in Tulo or the earthen buildings decorate their home with red lanterns and place sugar canes behind the door, a custom symbolizing wealth and good fortune. Our reporter Wang Tianyu recently hit the streets of East China's Huzhou city to find out the locals' travel plans. Take a look. We will visit family elders on the first two days of the Chinese New Year, and then take the whole family to travel around, like Hangzhou city or Anhui province. I will work until the end of the holiday break and then go back to my hometown. Then I'd like to travel to the northern area like Heilongjiang province, but I don't have a specific plan yet. We just travel around the Yangtze Delta area, but may go further south to Fujian, Hong Kong or Macau. The transportation is very convenient now. We can just take the high-speed rail from here. I am local here. We just got married and we will go to his hometown to celebrate the New Year. Uh, we will also travel to Wuhan and Changsha City. In southern China's Guangzhou, the festive atmosphere is blooming. Guangzhou's flower markets are doing brisk business. The city is going out loud to help residents honor floral customs to welcome the new year. Huang Fei has the details. In Guangzhou, flowers are considered the centerpiece of Chinese New Year celebrations. But before the city's main flower markets open for business, the first sign of spring appears in an unlikely place. Welcome aboard Line 5 of the Guangzhou Metro. In the days leading up to the Chinese New Year, these carriages are transformed into a sea of blossoms. People are turning from shopping at a local wholesale market, often choose the subway over taxis. Well, it's cheaper and offers plenty of space for larger plants. Some stations even offer to trim or package oversized plants to make sure they have a smooth journey. I've made a few transfers to do my flowers shopping here. It's cheaper and offers more exotic options. I try to do my flower shopping early to bring the festive spirit home sooner. Golden fruits represent the togetherness. 
orchids symbolize wealth, and this bloom signifies success. Yes, I buy flowers here every year. I'm not sure about the symbolism. I just buy whatever looks pretty. Not far from the subway station is South China's biggest flower wholesale market, open all year round. To celebrate the Year of the Long, or Dragon, flowers with the character of the mythical beast are especially popular. These dragon orchids are selling fast. We are going to run out of stock this year. Yesterday, one customer bought a dozen of pots. Older people choose the traditional red orchids, while younger customers prefer the so-called macron colors. Across the city, some 15 million pots of festive plants are available for sale at these pop-up stalls. The largest and oldest New Year flower market opened on Tuesday in the city's main shopping street, featuring various folk art displays. Last year, nearly 4 million people visited Guangzhou's flower markets over a three-day period. This year, opening times are being extended as the city sees an opportunity to boost sales. However, for many locals, this isn't just about stocking up for the holiday. It's actually more about spending quality time with family and honoring traditions. It's believed that simply by completing a walk around the market, one could bring good luck for the new year. Hebei CGTN, Guangzhou. Feasting is essential to spring festival celebrations. In southwestern China's city of Chengdu, one innovative restaurant is elevating dining to an interactive, cultural, and more memorable experience. Our reporter Xu Xingchen discovers how. The spring festival officially begins on February the 10th, yet celebrations and festivities already started weeks ago as the retail market here in China continues to grow. Business owners are becoming more creative than ever to capture eager Chinese consumers with ever-changing appetites. That includes southwest China's Chengdu, a city famous for its history and spicy food. Zhao Chengwen, a local and friend, is showing me something I've never experienced, combining hotels, dances, and food. So now we are going to Shu Yanfu. It's located in the Chengdu East Suburb of Memory Park. Okay. And you know, in the ancient time, Shu means Sichuan. Yes. So the Shu Yanfu is the Sichuan banquet. This is one of a kind dining experience where dancers perform and patrons sit in the same way Asian Chinese would during celebrations. The performances and dresses are inspired by traditional Chinese culture mainly from the Han and Tai dynasties some 2,000 years ago. And the choreography comes from the stories and legends of ancient China, especially Sichuan. I think this is the future direction of dining services. To be honest, I think dining at home is the most comfortable choice. So many people who opt to dine out are looking for more than just food. That includes socially interacting with others and experiencing cultural elements. Consumers love to choose places that offer something more. Diners here also have the option of paying a premium for trying on traditional clothes, taking photos and videos before the banquet starts. It feels like the TV show A Dream of Splendor, which centers around the tea house from ancient times. It makes me feel like a character from the show I want to try it out. Today, I'm able to be here to have a more immersive experience in traditional Chinese culture. For sure, it can help us to gain a deeper understanding of our old culture. The restaurant will open throughout the Spring Festival and will feature a series of performances. Two-thirds of the total 170 seats have already been booked a week ahead of the Chinese New Year's Eve and is expected to attract a full house. Yes, of course, it's really amazing thing. It's just outside the door, here is the intellectual and fashion block. And inside the door, we became the Asian Chinese people who come from thousands of years ago. And we can experience how they eating, how they singing, and even have dancing. The growth of the retail market in Chengdu is ranked among the highest in China. And experts believe one of the main drivers is the creativity of local business owners in attracting customers. From lanterns to fiery performances, 
malls and shopping centers in Chengdu are working hard to capture eyes before they capture wallets. Xu Xinchen, CGTN, Chengdu. And now we're heading for a short break. Still to come on Global Business. China's January CPI rises by 0.3% month on month, driven by spending ahead of the Spring Festival. The Chinese New Year is about heartwarming homecomings. Dive into vibrant celebrations and traditions coming to life. Discover the allure of long inspired art. Savor festive flavors of reunion. Seeing blockbusters become part of cherished memories. The thrill of winter sports offer a unique festive gateway. This Chinese New Year, get to know new spending trends with our special series, Spending Smart, the Chinese New Year Boom, only on CGTN. Now to China's inflation data, the official Consumer Price Index, or CPI, edged up 0.3 percent month-on-month in January. The small gain was driven primarily by spending ahead of the Spring Festival holiday. Cold weather also pushed up food prices. On an annual basis, the CPI fell 0.8 percent due to a high base from January 2023. Meanwhile, the producer price index continued to fall in January as factories halt production ahead of the holidays. But the easing of PPI has slowed as prices of major raw materials increased on the global commodities market. This week, China's financial regulator is again calling on local governments to increase funding support for certain white-listed real estate projects. Besides funding, first-tier cities have also eased home buying requirements over the past two weeks. In Shenzhen, non-locals with three consecutive years of tax and social insurance payment records are eligible to buy a home. The requirement used to be five years, and Beijing has lifted long-standing extra home buying restrictions for households in the Tongzhou district. And Guangzhou removed restrictions on larger apartment purchases, while Shanghai is allowing non-locals who have yet to get married to buy a home in the city. And policy changes in first-year cities are widely regarded as a signal for further easing. Some experts see a cut in mortgage rates very soon. And now for more on the Chinese property market, we're joined by our guest uh, Chu Chang, Research Fellow of Beijing Foreign Studies University. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chu. So what is your assessment of the recent policy package from uh, the financial regulators and the housing regulators, and what support does he offer the property market? Well, I think this uh, policy package is uh, a very good one. I think it's very thoroughly considerate and also fitting into Chinese reality. If you take uh, you know a notice, you will find out that this actually actually been you know uh, be dominated and uh, led by the Ministry of Housing uh, instead of uh, being led by the Central Bank of China or other financial regulators. Uh, taking a look at the uh, experience or lessons of the United States back in 2008, and those packages in the United States try to save the market as pro- provided by the Federal Reserve and come into the. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and directly come into the troubled financial system. But in China, I think uh, they took a very different path because the whole package has been led by the Ministry of Housing. I think the reason why they're doing that is because, uh, number one, is uh, is more consideration to put into the uh, livelihood priorities. What does that even mean? It's because many of the home buyers has already paid their uh, you know down payment and also it's, they're paying the uh, a monthly mortgage. But now, because of the liquidity issue, uh, certain of the projects of the property development is uh, left unfinished. So the home buyers has already paid the money, but they cannot move into their new home. So this is more than just a financial problem, but it's uh, more likely a livelihood issue. So I think the central government of China really paid attention to that and will solve that kind of problem. And secondly, I think the Chinese government is really, really cautious about that. Uh, is uh, it's not like helicopter money. It's not like the cash flood all over the uh, uh, market. Try to save everything. So you see, this package is more like a project based, which means I'm not saving uh, one of the big uh, developers. I'm not saving the whole market, but I'm saving certain projects. If you have trouble, so based on that, it's like you can 
provide a very targeted you know, uh, relief package to certain projects to make sure the delivery and completion of a certain building to be put into the home buyer's hands and to make sure that the basic balance sheet of certain you know, companies of development is not in trouble. And also another consideration for this uh, package is that it goes on batch by batch. Right now, I think we have already gone by the first batch. Uh, probably, according to my knowledge, there, there are going to be around 40 you know, big companies and more than 200 of the projects has already get the uh, help from this uh, package. Uh, each uh, package probably get uh, like uh, 1 billion Chinese yuan to uh, 3 billion Chinese yuan, considering uh, it's uh, very targeted. So uh, it's, I think, uh, uh, compared to United States lessons, you know, they have applauded the whole market with a huge package of helicopter money. I think this move is really, really, you know, be restrained because I think uh, right now uh, we just see the worldwide inflation see of silver lining. Uh, the least in information you want is the second largest economy like China wants to, you know, put another inflation again. So I think China's caution has already been a good news for the rest of the world as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this can really, you know, reverse the market expectation and the property development. Mm -hmm. So how much will the introduction of the uh, so-called white list for real estate projects have on the property market? Well, I think the uh, impact has been really good because right now, particularly like this uh, stock price of the major developers in China, and also they are offshore borrowing, like the US dollars denominated offshore debt, uh, the price has already been stabilized, which is a very good term. And also the reason why we call it a whitelist, because I think everybody deserves to know is it's not like a freebie, it's not like the free cake to deliver to anyone else who is in trouble. But to give the qualified borrower, for example, if you want to get into this whitelist, first of all, you need to fulfill certain kind of the completion ratio, which means your building must be you know, very near to be completed. And secondly, you have to be fully collateralized. So you have the quality to borrow. And also you will be subject to your assets and balance sheet under the, uh, the regulator's you know, supervision. And last but not least, also you need to, you, know, you cannot embezzle uh, your you know, pre-sale fund Otherwise, you wouldn't get into this white list. So I think Chinese government has tried to provide liquidity into this market, but also to be very, very cautious to not let the, you know this uh, you know saving package to just go sour. Mm. And when the Chinese property market is trying to find the bottom, what is the outlook for the uh, the market outlook following the introduction of recent supportive policies? Well, real estate market is one of the most important markets for the whole world. Even for the United States, even though everybody say uh, United States they have serious government debt issue or they have a very high rising stock market, but back in the 2008, nobody can even imagine the, you know, the housing market it's become the uh, final explosion to you know everything. So and the similar uh, situation happened with Japan with European Union. So it keeps us being uh, you know following what's uh, going on in the property market, you know. On one hand, you really need to care about the uh, uh, the bubble ratio. You don't need to leverage up a ratio to go up too quickly. So, in back in the 2020, China has provided a policy of a three red line or three bottom line to cap the leverage ratio for the major developer. Try to squeeze out the bubble, and I think we have already done it. By doing that, we have already exposed all kinds of the potential bombs and the risks. But right now. You can not only just squeeze out the bubbles, also you need to provide the, you know, the bottom line, the safety knife for these developers. Otherwise, if you uh, face a sudden halt on the liquidity in the whole development, you will also trigger some other kind of financial risks and also livelihood risks. So what Chinese government is doing right now is to provide the safety net to you know, make sure the whole uh, market will be stabilized and not agitated. So I think uh, you know, this is the last day of the Chinese uh, New Year. So I think we have already solved basically two most important concerns for international investors. One is the local government debt. The second is the real estate market. So with this policies in the position, so I think the uh, potential risk is gone, especially when we're saying the housing market is a non-tradable uh, sector and also the Chinese uh, property developers, uh, you know, offshore borrowing, the presence is also very limited. So I think after the Chinese New Year, the whole market expectation will be finally stabilized and we will see you know, a major you know, rebound in the economy and also some shining point in the financial market, for example, like the stock market of China.
Mm. Well, thank you so much for your analysis. That's Xu Chan, the Research Fellow of Beijing Foreign Studies University for us. Now moving to some, some business headlines we're focusing on across the globe. China's shares ended the year of the rabbit on a high note with all three major stock indices rising by more than 1%. And both the Shanghai Composite and Shenzhen Component rose for a third straight session. The markets will be closed for the Chinese New Year holiday from Friday. In India, central bank has left rates unchanged, indicating that interest rates cuts may not happen soon as it focuses on its commitment to achieve its 4 percent medium-term inflation target. The governor of the Reserve Bank of India said the monetary policy must continue to be actively disinflationary. And Turkey's new central bank chief said on Thursday that the bank will continue to maintain its tight policy stance until inflation drops to its target level. Additionally, the central bank held its year-end consumer price forecast at 36%. China's pet economy is benefiting from an upturn in demand in the lead up to the Chinese New Year. Valued at over 270 billion yuan, pet care suppliers, shelters, and pet sitters are all seeing a surge in demand as nation's city workers return to their hometowns. CDTN's Lei Shuran has more. More and more people in China are looking to pets for companionship. And so there's a booming market in services to ensure their furry friends have every possible comfort. Preparing fresh water and food, doing the cleaning, interacting with them, these are what pet sitters like Gu Jun do every day. During this holiday season, he'll make more than 10 home visits a day. Many clients also send detailed instructions on just how their pet should be pampered. I have been doing the job since 2015. At that time, I only received four to five orders a day. But later we see growing devotion of pet owners to their furry friends. They are more concerned about their pet's comfort. So I have more clients, nearly 100 now. The growing demand for pet sitters during the holidays is mainly from pet owners, like this young couple, who plan trips or return to their hometowns to be with family. We young pet owners have more demand for the services. We don't have other family members here, so we need sitters to take care of our puppies during the holiday. The costs are based on the number of pets and how long it will take. We have ordered a five-day pet sitting service, starting from February 10th. To deal with the growing demand, many pet care service providers are hiring more part-time sitters and even offering them special training. We verify pet sitters to pet owners. So we kind of had to, you know, teach the people that were coming to our platform, yes, you can love pets, but what is your experience with pets? And then if they didn't have experience, we offer people to come to our adoption events or volunteer with us to gain that experience. So we really go in depth with the interview process, making sure they have the experience on taking care of the animals. And where the market goes, the money follows. Many clever businesses are offering more holiday-related for pets-only food as well. And a long line of special treats are expected to hit the shelves in pet stores. More people now consider their pets to be family members. They become more willing to celebrate the holidays with the little ones. So we launched this gift box for this spring festival and is getting good feedback. It's not just food. Niche pet toys and other supplies like holiday-related clothes are also available. According to researcher Roland Berger, the number of pet owners in the country has already exceeded 100 million, with over 70 percent of them born in the 1980s and 90s. And they are very willing to spend the money to keep their furry friends happy, especially on the holidays. Lei Shuran, ICS for CGTN, Shanghai. And that would do for this edition of Global Business. Thank you for being with us. Bye for now.